Right now, we are seeing incredible events unfolding daily with the lawless one, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the Antichrist U.S. president, now under fire from the powers that be, under investigation, being exposed for what he is, an ungodly man, who is now threatening to use his ungodly military power against a foreign government, against Venezuela, to overthrow that government and to change the subject in the USA, to change the dynamic completely. And as we've talked about in previous videos, we want to keep our eyes on the prize because this world is not our home. This world is not where our hope is placed. Today, the world is standing on the precipice of some big changes about to take place. But we look to a better day. We look to a sure hope. We look to the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So today, let's return to our Bible study in the Gospel of Mark where we've come to chapter 13, verses 26 and 27. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. Two years ago, I made a video I'd like to reiterate today dealing with this passage in the Gospel of Mark, the gathering of the saints at the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. I started out this video by talking about the tribulation of the saints, the persecution of God's people during the great tribulation preceding the second coming of Jesus Christ, the rapture of the church, the gathering of the church to the Lord Jesus Christ at the time of his second coming. That is what the Bible teaches us. God has given me a message to share with you. And this is another joyful message. I can hear a joyful bird out there singing right now while I'm preaching this message. You know, I love that Bible verse that says, count it all joy, count it all joy when you go through trials and troubles and tribulations we tend to say oh no i don't want to have to go through anything if we didn't ever go through anything brothers and sisters the truth is we would never grow up as christians we have to live this christian life we have to go through these experiences now i'm like anybody else i don't like going through troubles no trouble is pleasant at the time that you're going through it and no one wants to go through troubles but the truth of the matter is if life was nothing but just smooth sailing and just just one constant happy ride down down the uh, water slide we would never grow we would never mature we've got to have those bumpy ups and downs we've got to have a rocky road sometimes we've got to go through these things sometimes in order to grow in order to mature in order to turn in to what god wants us to become and that's why he allows us to go through this world and live through this journey and have our ups and downs our mountaintop experiences and our valleys and no one wants to be in the valley, and we all love being on the mountaintop. But we also are mature enough to understand these things that the Bible tells us. We need to mature. We need to grow, and, and we need to sometimes face persecutions. David, you remember when David was going into exile, when his son Absalom was, was rebelling against him and trying to take over the the throne from David. You remember that David was fleeing from Absalom and some of his enemies were throwing dirt at him and, and his soldiers said, well, let's, let's go over there and kill him, stop him from throwing dirt at the king, you know, King David. And David said, no, let them throw their dirt because after all, maybe the Lord has said, 
let that man throw dirt at David right now. Maybe, maybe this is part of what I've got to go through right now in order for me to get to where God wants me to be. David was wise enough and mature enough to tell his army, no, don't go over there and kill those people. Let them throw their dirt and we'll get through this. And, and God will, God is doing what God wants to do. What is a, a reason why God would allow the church to go through times of trouble and persecution in these last days? Well, I've already hinted at that. It's because God is wanting his church to be a godly and holy and wise church when he gathers them at the second coming of Christ. The Lord is not wanting to come and get his church right now in the state that his church is in. And I, w I would just ask you to consider what if you were a, a young man or young woman with a fiance? You may be. You may have a you may be a, a person right now who has a fiance. And what if your fiance that you are pledged to, that has pledged their self to you, what if that fiance of yours was just all wrapped up in everything but you? What if your fiance, your fiance was into this and into that and always talk, let's say it was a young woman always talking about some other man besides you always talking about this other man and how this other man is is someone that they really admire their champion their hero how would you look at your fiance if your fiance was constantly hyped up about this other person how would you if you're a young lady how would you like it if you had a young man who 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 was always talking about some other woman instead of talking about you someone that was a man that was always wrapped up in this other person and not, and not you how would you look at that look at the church today in america i can say that in america we've got what is called a church that is all wrapped up in donald trump donald trump's going to save them. Donald Trump's their hero. Oh, Donald Trump has saved them from Hillary and Obama. And Donald Trump is going to do this. And Donald Trump's going to make America great again. They're going to have a wonderful world in, in this world. They're going to have a wonderful life in this world. They're, they're all about this world. They're all about Donald Trump. God is going to show them that their idol is their worst enemy. Just like with Obama, you say, well, what about Obama? I'm always hearing people say, what about Obama? What about Obama? Obama turned out to be the Democrats' worst nightmare. You know, they put all their faith and trust in him in 2008, 2009. About that time, there was a minimum wage increase that came from George Bush that went into effect just as Obama became president. $7.25 an hour. Today, after eight years of Obama, we've still got a minimum wage for the working poor of $7.25 an hour. Never. He talked big talk, but never did Obama try to push that through the Congress. Obama had a Democratic Congress for part of his administration, and he never did push through a minimum wage increase for the working poor. Obama never did get out of all these wars. When he came in, he told his, all of his Democratic base, we're going to get out of all these wars. He made, he got it, he got into this war, he got into this war, he got into, he bombed everybody. He was a killing machine and he absolutely disappointed his base completely. He was an absolute disaster. Why? Well, God has to show the idolater that the person they're putting their hope and faith and trust in is going to turn out to be a big disappointment. Donald Trump is going to turn out to be a big disappointment. He's going to turn out to be the worst enemy that the Christians who voted for him ever 
had. It's like in the Old Testament, you've heard the, the story of the young man that said to the people of Israel, may a fire come out from this leader that you have chosen and consume you because you have made this leader, this evil leader, your idol, your savior, your God. A fire is going to come out of Donald Trump and consume these people that have put their faith and trust in him because they call themselves Christians. They say their heart belongs to Jesus Christ, but they're all about Donald Trump and God has got to show them. God has got to show them that there is no hope and no salvation in man. Psalm 118.8 says, put your trust in God. Don't put your trust in in man don't put your trust in this world don't be living for this world jesus said stop laying up your treasures in this world lay up your treasures in heaven why do you want to make america great again this is not our home this is not where we're going to stay this is not what it's all about children and grandchildren this is not what it's all about for them either it's heaven heaven is what it's all about Winning the loss to Christ, getting people ready for the kingdom of heaven. That's what Jesus is all about. And that's what he tells us to be all about. The Great Commission. Now, let me read from the book of Daniel. God gave this prophecy to Daniel. Daniel, who was a man of God in his generation. No one like him in his generation. I mean, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were godly men also. But Daniel stood out even among them. Daniel was a man of God, a man who walked close to God. And so God gives this prophecy to Daniel, the man of God who is so close to God. And he says, God says that this is what he's going to do with his people in the last days. He tells Daniel, here is what I'm going to do with my servants, the people who are my servants in the last day. The people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. In other words, the people who know their God shall be steadfast and will accomplish notable feats, great things will come from God's people in these last days. The Holy Spirit is going to do great things through his people in these last days. And then it says, yet they shall fall by the sword and by flame, by captivity and by spoil many days. In other words, for many days, they shall be downed by the sword and by flame put in prison and plundered. You know, this, this is what the Bible is telling us is going to happen in the last days to the people of God. They're going to be strong. They're going to be godly people, but they're going to go through persecutions. Some will be put to death, the Bible says. Some will be put in prison. And the Bible is also clear. Some will still be here. When Jesus comes again, they will be changed and they will be caught up to meet the Lord. I believe with all my heart, the Bible is clear. That is talking about the second coming of Jesus. But praise God, the church is going to be going through this journey to that time, living strong for the Lord, firm for the Lord, glorifying God. Going through persecutions, yes, but at the same time, being a strong witness for Jesus Christ to the lost people of this world, being a strong church, encouraging one another, focused on Jesus Christ, not focused on Donald Trump, not focused on all these other things of this world, not focused on America or saving America. It's going to be a church focused on the kingdom of God, heaven. And Jesus Christ, 
It's going to be a church with a right mind and a right heart and a right attitude, not worried about trying to save their little world here on earth, their little country of America, their little red, white, and blue flag. They're not going to be obsessed with that as you see many people are today. Today, it's like it's all about America. It's all about the flag. It's all about this world. There is a false religion that has gotten all tangled up in the minds of Christians. It's called nationalism. And it's this religion of this is my home. This is where I belong. You know, this is this is what it's all about. And God, throughout the Holy Bible, tells us over and over again, this is not what it's all about. What it's all about is heaven. What it's all about is laying up your treasures in heaven and looking toward God. So let me read some more of what God says to Daniel, the holy man of God. He says, Now when they shall fall, they shall be helped with a little help. But many shall cleave to them with flatteries. In other words, while they're falling, they shall receive a little help. They're going to get a little help. And many of them and many people who are not sincere will attach themselves to the church in hypocrisy. There will be phonies that will come along saying, oh, I'm one of you only to try to exploit and, and do what they want to do in their own selfish heart and in their own selfish mind to subvert the church, to betray the church. So that's going to happen in these last days. So be on your guard, be on your alert. Also, it says, some of them of understanding shall fall to try them and to purge them and to make them white. Now, brothers and sisters, this is not talking about being washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. That's how we're saved. There's only one way to be saved through the blood of Jesus, through the forgiveness of sins in Jesus Christ. No one is going to be saved through purging or being tried or, or going through trials. That's not going to save anybody. That's not going to wash anybody clean or make anybody white as snow, as the Bible says. But this is talking about a different kind of being made clean and white. This is talking about how we as Christians go through life and the things that we go through test us and make us stronger. You know, the idea of testing metal and making it stronger, purifying it, putting the metal through the fire is how the metal is cleansed. Gold goes through the fire and comes out pure gold because all of the other impurities are burned out. That's what we're talking about here. We're talking about God's prophecy to Daniel that he gave Daniel, saying to Daniel, my church in the last days is going to go through the fire. They're going to go through a purifying process to be made into the beautiful bride that I want them to be. When, when we go through these trials, it draws us closer to God. It draws us closer to Jesus Christ. We start realizing, I can't put my hope in this man, this presidential contender, or this president, or this world leader, or this government, or anything. Nothing else is going to save me. Nothing else is my hope. When you get down on your knees in desperate prayer to God, asking for God's help, seeking God's mercy, that's when you stop putting your faith in Donald Trump. That's when you stop putting your faith in America. That's when you stop putting your faith in the red, white, and blue. That's when you put your faith in Jesus Christ. That's what God is doing in these last days. He's going to put his church through the fire. Donald Trump is going to turn out to be your worst nightmare because you're going to realize all of you that are putting your faith in Donald Trump, you're going to realize, my God, this man is a monster and he's he's persecuting the church now. He is evil. And I thought he was going to be my savior. I thought he was going to help me. I thought he was going to make America great again. He is going to turn out to be your worst nightmare. 
you are going to say someday the day is coming not that far away when you're going to say my god forgive me that i ever voted for him my god forgive me that i ever had anything to do with him god is going to open your eyes many of you are going to see what you don't see now that's why i am so determined to to keep on reaching out to you because i am convinced the time is coming not far from now when you're going to say my god now i see donald trump is not a savior jesus christ is the only savior and he's going to be jesus christ is going to be everything that you ever hoped that he would be he will fulfill every promise he will keep every word that he has spoken and so now i want to read some more about what god says to the prophet daniel this holy man of god in the 12th chapter of daniel we see this verse in verse 10 many shall be purified and made white and tried in other words many will be cleansed and made white and purged now we're not again we're not talking here about salvation if you're saved you're saved as a free gift of god through the blood of jesus christ and your sins are forgiven that's how your name is written in the book of life nothing else is going to get you into heaven but the blood of jesus christ the forgiveness of your sins repent and believe the gospel that's what jesus christ says in mark chapter 1 verse 15 jesus says repent and believe the gospel in other words come to god and say oh lord forgive me save me wash my sins away i'm a sinner i need forgiveness save me and forgive me and make me clean that's how you get to heaven but then when you have become a christian i absolutely guarantee you if you're truly a christian God is sanctifying you. He is setting you apart. Sanctification is a process. Sanctification is something that God does through your life day by day by day by day by day. We are sanctified in Christ, declared clean, but we are being sanctified. We're on our way to what God wants us to become. A more mature Christian the Bible talks about how God is bringing us to maturity he doesn't want to leave us in in us infancy being a little baby in Christ he wants to take us to maturity the only way we're going to get there is through the trials and troubles and tribulations that we go through and that's what the prophet Daniel is talking about here the church in the last days is not going to be taken up to heaven in a stage of infancy because right now the church is immature just absolutely like a, a little baby sincere devotion to Jesus Christ is among the few I thank God for the few that have devoted themselves to Christ and the Word of God and are not all wrapped up in politics and and the things of this world and 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 making America great again all of that has got to be burned away from your heart and your mind God doesn't want a church that is all about America God doesn't want a church that is all about the American flag God wants a church that is all about Jesus Christ he wants a church that is devoted to Jesus Christ please understand that as Christians God has a purpose in our life to make us holy to sanctify us and make us into what he wants us to be and the church today is just not where it ought to be the church today all over the world not just in America but all over the world people who are calling themselves Christians are all wrapped up in this world idols their leaders their government their politics and all kinds of vain philosophies they're trying to mix it all up with Jesus Christ and you just can't have two masters you can't have two gods you can't have both faith in your politics and faith in the kingdom of God and in Jesus Christ it doesn't they're always going to clash somewhere somehow your conservative ideology is going to clash with your Christian faith at some point and the problem is 
when it's clashing, you're choosing the conservative direction. You're saying, well, that may not be exactly Christian, but it's conservative and I'm going to go with the conservative. You're going with a false God and a false religion, a false philosophy, a false hope, instead of going with your Lord Jesus Christ. And that is what's got to come to an end. God is not going to rapture up a church into heaven that is all wrapped up in this world. He wants a church that is devoted to him, a church that's heart is singular and undivided and devoted to Jesus Christ. And so he's got to let his church go through the trials, go through the fire, and go through this time that Daniel talks about in his prophecy when the church will be purified and cleansed and purged and tried and tested to be made mature into what God wants his bride to be so that he can take his bride into his arms at the rapture, a bride that is praying, a bride that is devoted to him, a, a bride that has no faith in Donald Trump or the things of this world or, or America or the flag, a church that is cleansed of all of that, a church that is devoted only to God, devoted only to Jesus Christ. Many will not be saved. Many that claim to be Christians are not Christians, but there are many who are born again Christians who are in a backslid condition right now. And that has got to change. That has got to be, be done away with. The idolatry has got to be done away with and the church has got to be made clean and pure and straight and mature as God wants his church to be, a mature church that is devoted to Jesus Christ. That's the church that Jesus wants to take home. This is not our home. This is not what we're all about. It's all about heaven. And so we will be here. We will go through the trials and God will get a church that is devoted to Jesus Christ and that will be what God will embrace and take home at the second coming of Jesus Christ.